Donald Trump has gotten another one of his Senate picks approved by the Senate. In a near party line vote Tuesday, the Senate approved the nomination of Sarah Pitlick, making the conservative lawyer the newest federal judge for the US District Court in St. Louis. Senate, uh, Senator Susan Collins joined the Democrats to oppose Pitlick. Every other Republican present uh, voted for her. So what is noteworthy about this individual, aside from the fact that she is very conservative and we'll give you some examples of exactly how I would say even out of step with regular Republicans, she is. But what's interesting is that Pitlick is the latest of Trump's nominees to receive a not qualified rating from the American Bar Association. That's something that used to matter, but doesn't anymore. It's long reviewed the competence of nominees for the federal bench. It will no longer be needed. In a September 24th letter to lawmakers, William Hubbard, the chair of the ABA's Standing Committee on the Federal Judiciary, wrote that Pitlick's quote, experience to date has a very substantial gap, namely the absence of any trial or even real litigation experience. He goes on to say, Miss Pitlick has never tried a case as lead or co-counsel, whether civil or criminal. She has never examined a witness. Though Miss Pitlick has argued one case in a court of appeals, she has not taken a deposition. She has not argued any motion in a state or federal trial court. She has never picked a jury. She has never participated at any stage of a criminal matter. She has never even while watching Law and Order sort of opined about how she thought the episode would end. She really has no idea how any of it works. And they did their job in pointing that out she, with specifics, but it doesn't matter because the Republicans are gonna support Donald Trump's nominee. She has no firsthand experience in any of this. And mm -hmm. I say that this is extremely important, not only with judge appointees from the president, but also with like district attorneys who are running. Mm -hmm. Like there are a lot of district attorneys, particularly on the liberal side, mm -hmm. who are running with absolutely no trial experience. Mm -hmm. And so they're Pitching a bunch of like generic ideas about decarceration with no no real mm -hmm. hands-on experience of how to make that happen. And then you also have you'll have so that you have the you need people there who have actually done it. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is an appointee of a judge who is like, well, I've never really flown a plane before. <laughs> if it's like having a pilot, it's like I've never really flown a plane before, but I saw the movie Flight. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I had Windows Flight Simulator in like 95. That would be pretty good. Also, I've hung out with some really accomplished pilots mm -hmm. and, and written reports on their flights for them. Yes. That's and what her she, job was. So the, the part of that analogy that you're alluding to is the fact that she was a clerk for Judge Kavanaugh. So I mean, that's, that's experience. It. But that's it, um, but it won't matter. Re really fast, I will say, I get what you're saying. I would argue that I understand the general principle between DAs running without prior. I would say they are operating at different levels of the judicial system. Well, one's also the DA voted is for just directly. about at the bottom. Yes, and uh, if you're in the Supreme Court, is literally the highest level you can possibly. But be. district attorney, like any, there are. Uh, it's elected. like well, really fast. It's like people who are running for city council without any previous, you know, governing experience versus someone uh, like who wants to be president without any literal experience about how bureaucracy or the government works. It's just They're gonna different. be super weird that she is going to walk into mm -hmm. the court. Sit down as a judge, never having done anything remotely like this before. Yeah, and that again, I this there's like occasionally I will have like a ghost whisper in my ear. It's the ghost of John and Arola of 2010. It was like there are standards for things, and I want to be like, go away, ghost. You're you're out of it's not your world you're out anymore. Of touch. It's, um, it's they like, were the ones who supposedly cared about this. No, what, what do you Experience? mean? Experience. Being qualified, that's supposed to matter to Republicans. No, They would have you believe it in the we, past. No, babies not being aborted mm -hmm. matters to Republicans. And not just as a matter of principle, as a matter of winning elections. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. This is them delivering on a promise to voters. Yeah. And it's one of the few that they can deliver on. The two promises to voters that Mitch McConnell has ensured the president delivers on is. I know what they are. What are they? No, no, you tell me. No, you tell me. It's going to be tax cuts and judges. Done. Yes. Hundred percent, and that's it. And and one of one of the two people. It's not just Mitch McConnell, but in the House side, Paul Ryan. They delivered the tax cut. Paul Ryan's like, Mitch has got these judges things. I'm going to go take take a vacation, then lobby. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And those are the only deliverables that needed, frankly, to be delivered. In order for me to be afraid about the prospects of Donald Trump running yeah. next cycle. Well, and this I cycle. 
If you're afraid now, wait until you get to a couple more graphics into this. But I first, a little bit more on, on Sarah Pitlick. Um, in, a, in addition to not being qualified for any of this, uh, there are reasons to worry about how she will, you know, how she will be a judge, on, a justice on the Supreme Court. Um, in a filing, she asserted that the practice of surrogacy has grave effects on society, such as diminished respect for motherhood and the unique mother-child bond. That is insanity. That was one of the worst subplots of the second season of Handmaid's Tale, I think. It's the attack on surrogacy. Mm. Uh, she has also argued that surrogacy is harmful to mothers and children and is a practice society should not be enforcing. Those are quotes. Her position that states should treat embryos like humans would likely outlaw abortion, in vitro fertilization, and surrogacy. They're trying to stop surrogate mothers. Yeah. That is multiple steps beyond where they have been on this issue. You have to go back to like the 50s. I mean, this which they are trying no, to do, I guess. The, being skeptical as a very friendly way to say this of surrogacy has like trappings of like literal witch trials in mm -hmm. it. You know, like, oh, it's so weird. This isn't your baby inside you, it's someone else's baby. <laughs> that goes against law and order, God's plan. Yeah. It's just so insane. It's so insane, it's but that's it. But that, gross. It, and especially with the judiciary, that is supposed to be the branch that doesn't care about the who what party is in power. Yeah. yeah. But to be really clear, I want to say it is gross to be weirded out by it as a judge, not to do it. Yes, it, it is totally it is normal disgusting. and good. But like this is supposed to be the impartial judge. Yeah. Justice is blind, but the justices are being pushed in and farmed. It's like minor league baseball. They have a farm system. Yeah. They they are training judges and they're put and they take the people that they know have written certain things, maybe in law school, as opposed to having like a dynamite fastball. They find someone who wrote something like this in law school and say, all right. You're on track, we'll yeah. put you with Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh was on track before you and you'll just move up through that. Yeah, like here's the thing, let's fast forward to 2023. You don't think they'll try to put her on the Supreme Court? I'm not saying that they will, they've got other crazies they can go to. But you think the fact that she has no experience, she's the only thing they know her for is having written crazy things about things that shouldn't even be being debated? She could end up being a Supreme Court justice. And uh, I wanna zoom out a little bit, because I, I said that this would get scarier and it will get scarier. Sarah Pitlick, as a federal judge, is a scary prospect. That one judge, but she will not just be one judge that Trump has picked. As uh, Sahil Kapoor tweeted, the Senate confirmed eight new federal judges just this week, bringing Donald Trump's total to 170. That's 120 on district courts, 48 on circuit courts, two on the Supreme Court, nearly all are in their 40s or 50s with lifetime appointments and position to shape American law for generations. By the way, he's only, that 170 is those three levels. There are many other sorts of courts that he's gotten too. But bear in mind, just with those three levels, Donald Trump has now picked about one in every five American federal judges. In, in, in three the, years. In the first three years, he has picked 20% of every federal judge you could find yourself going before, he's still got another year, he might have four or more after that. I mean, this is a devastating effect that he projects out into the future. Even if someday the filet fish catch up to him, um, you're gonna have, you know, in 12 years, President AOC's legislation potentially being knocked down because of Donald Trump picked federal judges and Supreme Court judges. So factor that in, when you go to vote. Please always do. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.